good morning, everyone. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Luc. So this morning, we will talk about uh, the role of AI in a human-centric organization. Uh, according, according to the IMF, um, more than 60% of the jobs uh, in um, developed uh, economies will be impacted by AI, and only 26% in low-income countries. Um, according to a recent uh, survey we conducted with CEOs at KPMG, we discovered that two-thirds of CEOs think that AI will create more jobs than they eliminate. Um, while the, I would say, exact ramifications of AI in the uh, world of work uh, remain still unclear, what's for sure is that more and more people are using AI in their day-to-day -day jobs. So to try to answer to this question of the role of AI in a human-centric organization, uh, we'll have today Lisa Hennigan. Lisa is leading uh, the digital organization within KPMG and our program to invest um, a couple of billion of dollars yeah. in technology and AI. Um, uh, Lisa has played I would say various roles in technology companies uh, with clients and also yes. has led the transformation of our UK firm uh, in a more digital, I would say, way. Uh, <clears throat> and Luc uh, has uh, led the Innovation and Technology Center at Orange. And now Luc is leading Next Gen Enterprise with an organization that I would say encourages new ways, new forms of management and governance to unleash, I would say, technology and the, the use of technology to, I would say, um, leverage on uh, collective intelligence. So my first question will be for you, Lisa. Okay. Um, how does, uh, in your uh, uh, mind, AI reshape uh, the opportunities and challenges that leaders are facing uh, are facing today. Okay, well, thank you, Axel, and thank you for the introduction. So, when I think of AI, like any new technology, it brings a massive opportunity, but also it will bring disruption with it. And uh, when I look at it, even across our own organisation. Our people are both excited, but also to a degree anxious of the implications of AI. But what we do know is it's really clear that organizations that embrace AI will be more competitive than those that don't. And, and so the opportunity it brings and the challenge is, how do you make the most of AI? And, and one of the things that we really focus on here, we created a framework because being head of AI, being chief digital officer, it's one of those things, what does it mean? So the framework becomes really important. How do you think across your organization from how you sell, how you deliver, how you, you finance your organization, all of those things? So you create a way that you think about AI so that you can assess the opportunities and then what you need to do for your people. Uh, perhaps, Luke, on that uh, question, uh, on the, these challenges uh, that leaders are today uh, facing with AI, some, a few words. Thank you both. Um, I'm really focused on managers at work and leaders, and it's a nightmare for them today to work because of paradoxal injection coming from the top, but also from the teams asking for ultra-personalized agenda. Everyone wants something different from the other within the team, but also from the top. So it's a nightmare. It's really difficult. The percentage of absenteeism, the top population is the manager uh, one that is uh, impacted by absenteeism because of this nightmare I just described. So AI, I see that as a real opportunity to find a way to uh, find margin of maneuver, to have qualitative time with your teams, um, and to allocate your resource, your attention on the priorities. So for example, we, uh, we are working with AI-based assessment for teams, 
that allowed a team at work and now organizations are based on teams, a network of teams, to understand what should be improved, what are the strengths, the weakness, and what they should prioritize as a work to improve their productivity or their efficiency at work. This is the first time we can do that at scale with marginal co cost. Uh, and a second example is AI-based coach that are available now uh, that didn't, they don't replace 100% uh, coaches uh, that help leaders to uh, deliver and do their, their work, but they are a good uh, support uh, to this optimization of the functioning of the leaders and managers at work. So a great opportunity, a great momentum, and technology for the first time, I will end on that, is a lover to find more time, more qualitative time, more human-centric time on the relation, the human relation with the others, and not as a constraint that eats your time, that eats your ability to have this exchange with other people at work, because we, are, as human, are, are done for that, are dedicated to this relation. That okay. makes the difference can in I, an can organization. I, yeah, can I just come in on that? Because what's so fascinating is you're actually not talking about the techno technical skills or the technology, are you, Luke? The, the reality is that's almost the <laughs> exactly. easiest thing. Yes. What AI gives us is it makes that bit easy. And what you're focusing on is how do we help people with what they need to be in order for AI to be successful? I think it's fascinating. Perhaps on that point, we, we see that AI is transforming the role of leaders, the role of managers. Um, uh, is, is there a prerequisite for companies to, I would say, unleash the potential of AI? I mean, in terms of culture, in terms of personal relationship within the, the firm, uh, the ethos of the, the, the companies. How does that may, I would say, help in unleashing the potential of, of AI? So if I start, yeah. shall I start? Um, so that's interesting because I think uh, you need to put AI in the hands of your people. But then you need to think about uh, AI needs to be human centric. The most important thing that we believe is AI does not replace jobs. The people that use AI will potentially replace those people that don't use AI. So how do you put AI into the hands of your people and then how do you give them the skills in order to be able to use and to develop around it? And one of the things that we're seeing now is uh, it, within professional services, as an example, uh, the things that you need to build on are the things that people would have in our, uh, our profession anyway. Uh, ethical judgment, professional skepticism, critical thinking. And it's those things that become incredibly important to help leadership, to help your organization to then embrace and use AI in a way that's authentic to who you are. Yeah. And yeah, for, for that to happen, you need also to perhaps have a, a culture within the orga organization that allows, I would say, uh, skepticism, yes. critical thinking. What, what do you think about that? Uh, I know that's one of your top main topic. I, I don't see uh, a, a potential limit in unleashing the technology as far as uh, the confidentiality of the use is ensured. I mean, have a private cloud, a private uh, servers and cloud uh, infrastructure to ensure that all the exchanges with the algorithm are controlled and not feeding uh, the compete the. Uh, the market as a, as a whole. And that the first thing and the second thing is the ability to audit the algorithm and the LLM and all the parts of the infrastructure. Uh, I was I'm, I was president of a, an IT uh, think tank for many years and we, we wrote uh, a white paper asking the government to make it possible at any time to be able to audit uh, the algorithm and it, especially for AI it's super important not to fail, not to fall in a black box uh, context, and to be able to enter uh, into the, the the algorithm. On that basis, um, you should uh, be completely at ease that 
every each task that could be replaced or automa automatized by AI is an opportunity to reallocate to the human uh, relationship, to the human centric, to the informal uh, moments that are especially uh, rich for innovation uh, to to be uh, to be um, um, at hand. So. Uh, for example, during the COVID crisis, uh, all the informal moments have been streamlined completely. It has been a disaster in terms of innovation, in terms of um, interpersonal relationship development, especially for the young people at work that are beginning in a work or in a new company. Uh, the ability to network, to establish a, a social um, network that has been uh, terrible for these guys. and. Uh, now the technology is a real lever to allow uh, the people to find new way of uh, allowing the, the time uh, to this qualitative uh, moment, to this informal moment that are not time wasting, but much more time invest into something that will allow serendipity, creativity. I was head of innovation for a 500 uh, company, FT500 company worldwide, and I know that serendipity uh, and uh, relationship cannot happen if you uh, if one if you're back to back the whole day. It's impossible. So, so yeah, no, no. Uh, sorry, that's me. But Lisa. it's interesting. So you're saying that the time that you release through productivity game with AI, you need to invest back into how you then engage with your people, create the innovation and those moments. But Absolutely. that requires learning, doesn't it? For people yeah. to positively allocate their time to do that. And not, not be at shame if you do yeah. so. Yes. It's not a waste of time. Because today what I observe in, the, in companies is that everyone is 100% focused on productivity. I'm doing well at work if I'm back to back from eight to eight. <laughs> It's a pity, in, in fact. And the, the social relationship mm. is at so low level, we can assess that with the algorithm I described before, and we have figures and facts on that. That's why absenteeism is at uh, highest in history at work. That's why engagement is at uh, lowest in, in the industry that is measured by KPMG, but also by Gallup worldwide. And and this uh, AI uh, capacity is really a, a breakthrough, I think, uh, for finding uh, the way to, uh, uh, to, 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 to find this room for maneuver. Um, in terms of relationships within the, 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 the companies, AI is creating a kind of new relationship between the human intelligence and the artificial intelligence. Those two intelligences are kind of empirical. Uh, they are both biased. Yeah. How, how do you see, um, to, be, to come back on your, or your produ productivity uh, thing, how, how do you see this relationship, um, I would say, evolve in time as AI will more and more, uh, I would say, be more and more present within, within companies? Are there any, I would say, learnings, things to, to, to think of in terms of yeah, how to make this relationship more efficient? You know, I decided to put my children in, a, in an Anglo-Saxon uh, school because they learned before not doing mistakes in a, in a sentence to express themselves. So that is really what is super important. Express, have uh, an understanding of the things. Uh, uh, have a reflection, uh, self-reflection, and and uh, criticism, uh, as you as you said. So I think AI is completely streamlining the young people at work that were supposed to do uh, low uh, low value uh, work. Uh, this could be completely handled by AI. And now we 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 have the opportunity to use our brain 100% on the base on the production of AI. So it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, what's at stake is to use your brain again and your social relationship again. So 
I will guess 50-50 would be a good blend. Okay. Lisa, perhaps on, on the new and younger generations, mm. I, I know that you're working a lot with yep. these young generations. Uh, how do you see the, the AI will, will impact the, the behavior of those new and young generations? And do you see any form of risk between young generations, older generations, with AI being more and more present? Well, I think most of the younger generations actually see it as an opportunity. Um, you know, again, it comes down to how do they use it? And what it does do is it accelerates the need for the young people when they come into an organization to learn and learn skills that maybe they would learn usually after two years or so that they actually don't need to, you know, they, they can start to learn sooner. So the interesting thing there is it puts the onus on leadership to how are you going yeah. to help them to get those skills. And, and therefore, I think there's a really important dynamic of how do we all bring AI into our everyday behavior? So it's not just about asking a, a tool to give you some information. It's actually how do you integrate that into the way that you're having discussions, that you're having meetings, so it becomes more alive, so that then our people see and learn the behaviors that are really important around it. That's what we have yeah. to give them. Um, but I think for younger people, and we, we have our average age in KPMG is 28. So we tap into this amazing community of people who are digital natives who just want to use the technology and accelerate what they're doing. So the impact is more on the, I would say, the managers, the leaders that need to embrace that so. uh, new culture yeah. uh, to really to. play a leadership role um, yeah. uh, with those younger generations. Uh, a few words on that, perhaps, uh, Luke? Yeah, um, for, for the young people at work, it will shortcut drastically um, the time where they can be on value-added exactly. tasks. So that's really new. I would say they will gain the two to three years that were supposed to be, you know, uh, young people at work, uh, low-value jobs. So this is completely... Uh, erased, uh, <laughs> shortcut, shortcutted. So they now can enter a company and be directly on the value added tasks. So this is completely new. Uh, this is very interesting. I see it also in the computing industry, in the tech industry, for uh, low level coders, for example, mm. that are developing application. Um, now AI is able to develop and to give you uh, code lines automatically of high quality for very simple tasks, uh, routines that you don't want to waste time for. So the young coders, uh, as the, the young managers or the young uh, leaders, they can gain this time and be uh, immediately on the uh, middle or high value uh, architecture of the code. So it's, it's impacting at the same time the tech uh, jobs and the more soft centric jobs, uh, soft skills uh, centric jobs at the same time. Okay. So it's, it's amazing. And I, I think once again, it's a really good news and a really good uh, way to, to be able to allow more time uh, to, to the qualitative um, reflection, qualitative relation with each other so which is which is today with the assessment we are doing uh, my company is um, did during the five last year 3,000 assessments of teams in different countries in in 10 different um, in, in different companies in 10 different countries the level of um, relationship at work of engagement once again is uh, is really uh, is really uh, low, um, so I see that uh, definitely as a breakthrough that is available right now. Uh, we we hear that uh, AI would create more jobs, more jobs that uh, they, they it will eliminate. What, what uh, Lisa, on, on, on your, in your view, what are those new jobs that are emerging uh, with AI? 
Well, I, I mean, I, I think actually what it does is it just broadens out roles and it creates more change. I, I don't think it's necessarily saying, if I look in a business like ours, there's going to be this new role or that new role. I think the difference is that people have to realize you don't go into a job and that is just the job mm. that you're going to learn and you're going to adapt adaptability will be absolutely critical um, but it gives you the opportunity to say i could be doing something differently we're going to see agents in our business you know sitting there as an agent actually within a meeting who will be doing part of what we did and so the roles that are there then become elevated and slightly different um, but I don't think it's necessarily specific new roles. Okay. And uh, in your view, uh, Luc, do you see emerging new, yeah. new roles, new... You know, as Internet has made it possible for everyone to access the information, so the level in a, in a company, in a hierarchical, classical company, was no more uh, linked to a level of information. At the same time, with AI, it is possible to deploy to delegate the authority much more and to, uh, to have more decentralized organization based on teams that are made of hybrid, hybrid uh, population from the, the company, uh, from partners, from uh, freelances, talents, customers, suppliers. And this is uh, really something that is propelled much more by the, by the AI and, and made possible via uh, AI-supported uh, technologies. Uh, in terms of impact of AI on workers' uh, experience and ways of working, do you see any impact? We've seen with the pandemic, the hybrid, I would say, remote uh, way of working emerging. Do you see with AI, I would say, new uh, emergence of of, of or new impacts on, on the, the ways of working for, uh, for our people? Well, 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 I think it comes back to that, how you integrate AI. So um, it, it does absolutely impact ways of working. H how are you running meetings? How are you talking to your colleagues when you're in meetings? For the AI to be effective, you actually need to be quite thoughtful in the way that you engage. Um, but also then to the point, I think, linked to what Luke was saying, I think you need to think about um, the way you construct your day. When we had COVID, we introduced something called a rainbow of meetings. So we were encouraging people to look at their day and classify what they do in different ways. And I do think with AI, there's, there's a bit about doing the same, thinking about where you're doing blue sky versus where you're doing something which is you know, governance related or something which is just getting through some tasks and therefore making sure you create a balance because otherwise it can be overwhelming. Yeah. And as you say, you sit and you go through one thing after another. You need to create the balance so that your mind can have the curiosity and the, 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 the broader thinking. Okay. Luke, on, on this evolution of ways of working, any yeah, thoughts? I, I, I think what, what AI make possible much more than in the past is to prioritize the high value task you have within a, a, a day work. And um, yeah, perhaps it's the new way of saying the Heisenhower matrix is embedded into AI because it allows you to, uh, um, to give to the, to the machine uh, everything that, is, uh, that doesn't need your, uh, your intelligence. So okay. th this, is, this is really a, a way to prioritize effectively on a daily basis. Thank you, Luc. Um, we are close to the end of this uh, conversation. Uh, we have time for one or two questions. Um, is there, are there any questions uh, people want to raise to Lisa or, or Luc? One here. Uh, hello, from the standpoint of a young person that wants to enter the workforce. Is AI a skill that is a plus uh, around the other skills that you have, for example, uh, for a person that wants to be an engineer? Or is AI a skill that you can have uh, alone and enter the workforce and uh, give an uh, uh, important value to, uh, yes, a company? So I think, are you saying that would we 
evaluate somebody coming if they have AI skills. Yeah. I mean, look, it, it's great if people have got skills and experience. The reality is they will give it those skills to anybody because everybody has to have them. You know, we believe you put AI in the hands of your people, you immerse them in the technology. And, you, and, and so the biggest thing that you can bring when you're looking to move into organizations is a curiosity, that, that, that critical thinking that how could AI help me do things in a different way and take the opportunity of what it could make you do. So AI is not the end of soft skills. It is soft skills will be more and more it's needed. The beginning of it. Definitely. It's the beginning to, of it. to 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 work with AI. 100%. Um, so thank you. I think now we are Out we are time. finished. Uh, uh, thank you, Lisa. Uh, thank you, Luc. And uh, we are happy to take questions offline. Okay. I would say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.